All right, people, good afternoon. Time for another weekly look at college football, specifically the quarterbacks. And this week didn't do a whole lot to help push back against the case being made that these college quarterbacks are just not that great. I'm just going to say it. <clears throat> yeah, this was not a great performance for some of these guys. Some of these guys did fine. Some of them played well. I'll shout out a couple of them. But overall, especially at the very top, we didn't see a whole lot great. Now, I'm perfectly willing to acknowledge extenuating circumstances, right? Like C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, he, he was pretty bad, right? I think he went 10 of 26 for like 71 yards. He was more productive as a runner than as a passer. But the weather was really, really bad. Uh, there were extreme weather conditions in that game. The, uh, I believe it was Northwestern. The Northwestern quarterback didn't do any better. It was one of those games. So I can look at that and go, okay, he's still awesome. Yes, it was not a very good game for Stroud. Yes, it maybe raises some mild concerns about his arm strength that he can't overcome the wind. But we, we see this sometimes. Even really good quarterbacks, they get into these bad weather games, these extreme weather condition games, and it's kind of out of their hands. So, not going to dock him for that, especially because Hendon Hooker didn't play well either. So, I'm leaving Hooker at two because it's understandable, right? It's kind of understandable. He, he didn't play a very good game. Georgia is Georgia. They're probably going to win the national title this year. They have an incredibly good defense. Some really excellent pieces over there. And we've already seen Hendon Hooker kill Alabama. I know Bama's not having their best year, but it's not like Hendon Hooker hasn't proved good things against credible defenses. So I'm going to definitely take it a little easy on our top two guys. So I'm going to leave them alone at one and two, Stroud one, Hooker two, just because I get it, right? Stroud, extreme, extreme conditions he had to overcome, and Hendon Hooker just, it's Georgia. Georgia's going to make a lot of quarterbacks look like that. Uh, number three, still Will Levis. He played pretty good. Played a good game for Kentucky. They won. He threw three touchdowns. Not a huge game. I think he had like 180 yards or something like that. But he played fine. Nothing wrong with that. Solid. Going to start working his way back up over these next few weeks, hopefully. That was a good start. And number four remains the same as well. You have Anthony Richardson, who played a good game against, I believe it was Texas A&M. Um, they won that game. Obviously, Texas A&M not having a very good year. They're like 3-6 and six now or something. But Anthony Richardson played a good game. Um, he's been playing really well lately. And given the fact that this team is currently in a situation where they may have their franchise QB for at least a couple of years, if Richardson declares, there's definitely something there. So if Anthony Richardson leaves college, I think it's a mistake. But if he does do it, then you can definitely finagle your way in there and get a guy who you can groom over the next couple of years. Um, number five, I bumped Cam Ward up a slot. He played fairly well against Stanford. Wazoo blew him out. It was like 52 to 14 or something like that. It was one of those scores. Uh, Cam Ward did throw a couple interceptions, so it wasn't a perfect game, but he played fairly well. Uh, threw a couple touchdowns, ran for a touchdown, was fairly productive with his legs. Uh, he's another guy who's probably going to stay back. That's why I have him highlighted in yellow, by the way. For those of you wondering what that represents, it means unlikely to declare for the pros this offseason. But um, there are still some things I really like about Cam Ward, and at this point, if he did come out, you could probably get him day two, day three, and develop him. Because he needs development, he's not going to be able to start day one, which is fine if you're going to keep Geno, which right now, because of what is happening with this QB class, is probably the most appealing option. It just is right now. Uh, Will Rogers had a really nice game um, last week. He, I think he threw the ball like 60 plus times, or almost 60 times, somewhere around there, like 59, 60, 61, and put up big stats, uh, missed state one, and that was probably his best performance of the year. I know he's playing in that Mike Leach system that is making these quarterbacks look like, you know, demigods with their stat line especially, but there are some things I see with Will, Will Rogers' game that appeal to me. 
I, I look at Will Rogers and I go, there's some stuff here with his game that makes sense to me at the NFL level. So I bumped him up a little bit after that good game. KJ Jefferson, I'm going to leave him at seven. He played a decent game. He, he had a couple turnovers, which you don't like to see. Still played okay. The issue with KJ Jefferson remains the same. He doesn't fit our offense. And our offense, maybe we switch it up after this year, but at this point, the only way that would happen is if Waldron leaves and takes Dickerson with him and we literally don't have anybody that can run this offense, so we just decide to blow up the current offense and bring in a brand new quarterback. Maybe this was proposed by a couple people in in a stream the other day. Maybe Waldron takes Geno with him wherever he goes, and then you're just like, well... We don't have anything now, so let's just go ahead and blow it up. Let's go get a brand new, different type of quarterback like KJ. Let's get a different type of offensive system and just go from there. I know nobody really wants to talk about doing that right now because things are going so well, but I guess it's possible. I, I doubt it, but it's possible. Uh, Bryce Young played a very interesting game against LSU. Less than 50% completion, but he made several big plays at the end of the game to try to win it. But they didn't win it. Um, defense let them down in overtime a little bit. They gave up the two-point conversion and Alabama's toast for the year, basically. So I, I'm still just not in love with Bryce Young. And there's really not much he can do to change my mind. He's just a little too small. And I'm a little too concerned about what that might mean for him at the pro level. And it's going to be hard for me to get past that. So I, I know some people really like Bryce Young. I get it. There's a lot of things about his game that are really likable, but your best availability is your availability. So I, I, I think there's some stuff with Bryce Young I'm going to have a hard time getting past. And it would be one thing if Bryce Young was a guy you could get in the second or third round, but we know that's not the case. Understand that. Yeah, some of the guys on my list who have been, or guys who have been on my list this year have been as small as Bryce Young. But the thing to understand is that Bryce Young is going to require a top 10 pick minimum, probably top 5. So that really puts me off of it. Number 9, I bumped up Grayson McCall. He had another good game for uh, Coastal Carolina. And he's turned in a really nice year. I know it's a smaller school. I know it's not, it's not exactly going to get the most attention in the world. But because of that, he may also be a lower draft pick. Could be somebody kind of like Bailey Zapp was last year. Or, well, I guess right now this year for in the draft. So Grayson McCall, number nine, I bumped him up. Um, I did dump May, by the way, just to explain why real quick. It's because he can't declare. It's literally impossible. He has only been in college football two years. I didn't know this until someone told me uh, last week. So May is off the board. So the number 10 spot, and here's a guy who's um, completely crashed and burned, DJ Ugalele. Um, he got benched again. Clemson completely no-showed a game they should have won easily. Uh, they got blown out, basically. He got, he, he, he didn't play well. Um, and he's got too much college football experience for him to be making these bad decisions. So I'm a little off the DJU train right now. Now, he's going to go back to college next year, probably. And if he plays really well and he fixes these issues, we can revisit this conversation in 2023, 2024. But as of right now, I look at DJU and I go, he makes too many bad decisions, so I can't rock with it. Um, we'll, we'll have to check in again next year. I still like him. If he did declare for some reason and was a really late pick, then sure, which he probably would be at this point. But I don't see a lot of pro-ready stuff with him right now. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. Uh, not a lot of movement, but a little bit of meaningful stuff here.